Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. In today's tutorial, we will continue to build out our Minesweeper application. Specifically, we will be building out some widgets to show our mines, to show our flagged tile, and to add detail to how our board looks. We'll also be adding another layer of state that will allow us to generate a bunch of random mines in the back end of our application. Before we get started, let's look at our current application and the Minesweeper application that we've been looking at thus far. You can see our tiles are flat and kind of lifeless. If you look at the tiles on this board, however, they are essentially two tiles, one on top of the other one. They've got a lighter tile, and then a more gray tile in the middle. And so to make our tiles look a little bit more two-dimensional, we should create this type of effect. Let's think for a moment about the various states of this particular Minesweeper board. So we've already split the states of a single tile into five different states, but there are also other states that exist in the game. For instance, a tile can either have a mine under it, or it can have something else under it. So this is sort of a binary piece of state that we can model with a Boolean. Also, a tile can either be covered or flagged, or it can be uncovered and have a number or nothing or a bomb on it. So I want you to think about these two divisions of state that we just talked about. So we have the binary operation of either having a mine or not having a mine. And then we also have the board state of having a closed tile with either a flag on it or nothing on it, or having an open tile with either a mine, a number, or nothing on it. First, let's address this Boolean state. We can do that by creating another two-dimensional list. This time, however, we can put Booleans in it rather than tile states. We can also initialize our two-dimensional list in the same way that we did before. This time, however, instead of giving everything tilestate.covered, we're filling it with falses. The idea being that if the tile is false, then there is no mine there. If it comes back as true, however, then we do have a mine there. So what we can do now that we have a two-dimensional list filled with falses, is generate a bunch of trues that we can randomly put inside of this list. And those trues symbolically will be our minds. Let's bring in dart math because we're going to be creating a random number generator. We can create our random number generator by instantiating a new random object. Then we can take our number of minds and push it into a integer called remaining minds. And the reason we want to do this is so that we have a mutable variable that we can affect on. Now we can create a while loop that will loop as long as our remaining minds are greater than zero. Inside of this while loop, we can use our random number generator to create a integer. And specifically, if we think about our two dimensional lists and we flatten them out, we really only have 81 different states that we can have in our current lists. Because of this, we can take our nine rows and multiply it by our nine columns, and then we can generate a random number between zero and 81. Then to convert this random integer into a format that we can actually use with our list, we can use integer division and modulus. So if I bring up a calculator here and we assume, okay, we have a random number between 0 and 81, say it's 74, we can divide 74 by 9 and this will give us 8 as an integer. And then we can take 74 mod 9 and this will give us 2. So we'll put a mine at row 8 and column 2. To do this, we can just check to see if there's a mine there. So all we have to do is check to see if it's false. And if it is false, then we can put in true. And we can also decrement our remaining mines number. 
So now when we run this reset board function, we'll generate our tile states, and then we'll generate a two-dimensional list of falses, which will also have a bunch of trues interspersed into it in a random way. All right, so this takes care of the dichotomy between either having a mine or having something else. Now let's talk about the dichotomy of either having a covered tile or having a tile with something in it. If we look at how we're currently generating our tiles, we're just creating this gesture detector with a listener inside of it and then a container inside of it. The container itself is the visual part of our tile. Now instead of outputting just a normal container, we can output a custom stateless widget. So we can either have a covered mine tile or we can either have an open mine tile. Now before we create these two widgets, we also want to create two global functions which we're going to share between these two widgets. For our two helper functions, we'll have a build tile function. This will take in a widget and output a widget and it will just return a container. We'll have the padding be 1.0 and the height and width be 30. The color will be colors gray 400, and then the margin will be 2.0, and we'll take the widget that we're passing into it, and we'll put it inside of this container. For our inner widget function, we're again going to output a widget and input a widget, and this one will output a container as well, except this time it will be 20 by 20. The padding and margin will be the same, and it won't have a color. So we'll just put the child inside of it, now with these two functions, we can build out our covered mine tile. And we want to have three properties for this covered mine tile. We want to have one called flagged, which will be a Boolean. And then we want to have two integers, one called the position X and the other one called position Y. Now flagged will signify whether or not this tile has been flagged. And position X and position Y will of course be the position of the tile on the game board. Inside of our build function, we can now create our tile. And for this, we first want to create a widget called text. And then we want to check to see if flagged is true. And if it is, we'll reassign text to build inner tile with a rich text inside of it. And of course, our rich text needs a text span. Inside of our text span, we'll put in a Unicode symbol for a flag. And you can just put in the Unicode code by putting in backslash u and then the actual code, which in this case is 2691. Here's what the actual character will look like. So it's just a Unicode black flag and you can see here's the code. So it says u plus 2691. You just want to remove the plus and put in a backslash and then just put in u 2691. Now Dart only supports Unicode 5.0 and below. So if the symbol is from a later Unicode version, then you can't put in the code like this and have it generate the symbol. In those cases, however, you can just paste the symbol like I just did here into a string. For our flag, we want to give it a text style. We want the flag itself to be black and bold. And then we want our rich text to be aligned in the center of our box. So after our if checked, we can then create an inner tile. And this is essentially the same as the output of our build inner tile function, except we have a color here. So what we're doing is we're creating a transparent tile with this function here. And then we're putting that inside of this tile, which has a color on it. And this tile here will be generated if there is no flag tile. So even if there's no flag tile, we'll just generate a small little tile that is gray 350. Then for the return statement for this function, we can just call build tile and then put inner tile inside of it. This will generate the exterior tile, which will make it look like it's two dimensional. Now we can come back up into our build board function and remove this container part and replace it with a covered tile mine we also want to come up to the if statement before it and add a or statement. And we're just going to add an or statement to make sure that this if statement checks to see if we have either a tile state of covered or a tile state of flagged. So now inside of our covered mine tile, we can check to see 
if our state is flagged and then put that in for our flagged boolean. Then for position x and y, we can just put in i, which is our outer for loop, and then j for y, which is our inner for loop. So now if we look at our application, you can see here, these tiles look a little bit more three-dimensional. And if we come down to this if statement and negate it, we can now look to see what our flagged tiles will look like. So you can see we have this nice little Unicode flag in the middle of each of our tiles and they still look like they haven't been revealed yet, which is pretty nice. All right, let's put it back to normal and let's build out our open mind tile. For our open mind tile, we want to get our tile state so we can check to see if our tile state is open, exploded, or revealed. And we also want to get the count and the count will be how many mines are near this tile. And this is something that we'll implement fully in a later tutorial. And of course we want these two final variables to be in our constructor. And again, like we did in our other build function, we create a widget called text, and we want to run an if statement to check to see if our state is tile state open. We also want to check to see if our count is not equal to zero. And if our count is not equal to zero, then we want to actually display the count on our tile. So we do this by setting text equal to a rich text with a text span. And we put in our count, which is the number that we're passing into here. So the amount of mines that are near this tile. And then of course the style will be bold and the color for now will be static blue. Later we'll make it so that this changes color based on the count number. If we look at our Minesweeper game, the ones are blue, the threes are red, twos are green, and so on and so forth. Various different numbers have their own color. So what we want to do is add that functionality, but we'll do that in another tutorial. If our tile state is not open, then our tile state is either blown or revealed. So we need to add the text to create our bomb in this else clause. So this else clause is attached to this if statement, not the inner if statement. And for this one, we'll say text equals rich text. So the same thing we were doing up here. And instead of having a count in it, we'll put in a piece of Unicode. This time it's a little star slash asterisk. So it looks like the explosion. And we want this to be red rather than blue. Everything else is the same though. Then for our return statement, we'll return build tile with build inner tile inside of it, and we'll put our text inside of both of these functions. Now let's go to our build board function and let's add the functionality that will make it so that these get built out. We'll put a little else statement after this if statement. And then inside of this else statement, we can call row children add open mind tile, put in the state and then put in the count. And for now, I'm just going to hard code the count to be one. So now if we look at our board, nothing has changed because we're generating only tiles that are covered. If we come into where we generate these tiles, we can replace this with blown. And if we reset the application, you can now see this is what our blown tiles will look like. So we have this red asterisk on each of the tiles, and they don't look like they're three-dimensional because they do not have that inner tile inside of them. We can also see what our open tiles look like. So if I just replace this with tile state open and then reset the application, you can see this is what they look like with the number on them. So this is just one and it's blue. Also for now, if we put in revealed, it will just show us the blown tiles, but that's something that will change in another tutorial. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.